Can't wait for winter to be over and spring to arrive? Well, neither can I. Well, now's the perfect time to make early sowings to get a head start for when the weather finally does warm up. And in this video, I'm going to be revealing a really rather tasty staple vegetable that you can plant and then harvest year after year after year. Let's get started. Crazy. It's time to wake up the first salads of the season. Now, many salads are very cold tolerant, so it's worth sowing them this month so that you'll have young plants ready to go outside once the weather has finally warmed up. The first salad I am going to sow is lettuce. It's a loose leaf type of lettuce. And the seeds here are really, really tiny. So I'm gonna just pinch them across like this and then lightly cover them over. Now there are two things that will dramatically improve your success with sowing lettuces. The first is to use really fresh seed. The seed doesn't last that long, so it's important to make sure it's viable. If you have old seed, do a little germination test to make sure it's still good. I'll link a video below on how to do that or buy yourself some fresh seed. Now I've sown it here and then it's very lightly covering it over just a little bit like that and gently firming it in. Then the second thing we can do once we've watered them is just to cover them to raise the humidity. So let's give them a bit of a, a water first. Now a lot of you have been asking about this. This is what's called a pump action sprayer. You just pump it up, it pressurizes it, and then it gives a lovely fine mist of water, which is really useful because uh, it doesn't disturb the seeds you've just sown. Right, that should do it. And then just secure it over with a bit of clear film like that. Where's the rubber band? There it is. Or you could put it in a uh, just a bag and then put it on uh, the windowsill. So this is going indoors to germinate in the warm on a windowsill where the light will also help those seeds to come along. Now once they're up, they can come back out here into the greenhouse or into a cold frame and then grown on a bit, they will go into their own little plug trays and then they'll be planted out in early spring about 10 to 12 inches, which is 25 to 30 centimeters apart in both directions. These leafy love leaves will form the bulk of my salad bed and I will include some radish and salad onions in there too. Now, if you're looking for inspiration for your own salad bed, then why not check out the free trial to our garden planner linked below, where you will find a beautiful, ready to go salad garden in the sample plans collection. And what better way to trumpet in the growing season than with a sensationally smooth, almost seductive crop of spinach leaves. These sorts of greens are impossibly good for you. They make you smile. They make you glow from the inside out. I would say it's worth making an early sowing of spinach so you get an earlier harvest because what happens by about early summer is that the plants invariably stretch out to flower called bolting and then your production of leaves really, really slow down. So this time I'm gonna sow them into these plug trays here and I'm gonna sow about three seeds, two to three seeds per plug and they won't need separating or anything like that. They'll just go out as they are. So let's get these beauties sown. They're nice light seeds actually, so you can see them against the, uh, the darker potting mix. And I'm just using, like for most of the things sown today, an all-purpose peat-free potting mix. And then just, of course, cover them over again with a little bit of our sieve through mix. Now these are gonna get a nice drink and then they're gonna go inside to start off as well. They'll come back out here the moment they have germinated to grow on. And then they will be planted into the salad bed out there, maybe a month on from that. Now to harvest them, it's a real joy. You just take one or two leaves from each plant at a time and then leave the other ones to grow on. And let me tell you, those first leaves of the season are absolutely sublime. Marvellous marigolds, awesome Alison. I love my alliterations. Now there's a reason I go on about these beautiful veggie garden flowers time and again, and that's because they're so useful in the garden. These guys really help to attract pollinators that you'll need to pollinate your vegetables, and they will attract pest predators. 
basically grow these guys and watch your gardening worries melt away. As you can see from the table here, Alison alone is incredibly powerful. Get them started now so you'll have plants in flower to attract predators before those pests arrive. I have to say it's barely above freezing out there but when it's sunny like this this is what really fires me up you can just feel the sap rising and the joy and ah oh. now we're going to start with our allison this is a real real trooper because it flowers all summer kind of on and off and actually here it flowers into kind of early winter as well so this is a really good sort of value for money kind of flower now the seeds are probably the smallest seeds you can get they're really really tiny like little specks of dust so I'm just going to very carefully scatter them thinly over the surface like that probably all I need there actually and then I'm going to very very lightly cover them over just the tiniest amount like that you can actually sow these direct into sort of the cracks of walls and things like that later in spring but I just want to get myself a bit of a head start next up marigolds now marigolds these do need a little bit more warmth to germinate so these are going to go onto a warm uh, windowsill just in the light to germinate just to hurry them along basically but these guys will go onto a heat mat to get a bit of uh, bottom warmth to get them going now I'll get the seeds out here they look a little bit I reckon like kind of tasseled ones if I pick one up you can see what I mean so these guys get just sewn flat across the surface like this and then just cover them over as before. Now last year's marigolds really sung their heart out and they add a lot of colour to the garden as well which I really really love. So as I said I'll give these both a good water and then they'll go indoors to germinate. Once they're up uh, they'll come outside here. The marigolds will come out a bit later because these do need to be kept completely frost free. Then I'll transfer the seedlings into their own plugs or pots when they're really quite young still because the roots won't be too developed at that stage and I find it a lot easier to gently get them planted that way rather than having a big root system that's quite tricky. And then they'll go outside as soon as there's no frost out there to liven up our summer veg beds. I love how easy these are to grow and the other great thing is they will readily produce their own seeds. Here are some of those uh, marigold seeds here for example. These ones were produced last summer and have been sat about outside uh, all winter long so I haven't sown them but next year or this summer I'm going to collect my own seed and keep the cycle going like that. Now if you'd like to know more about these vegetable garden flowers or my other favourites do check out our video on that, which I will link to down below. A few weeks ago, I was extolling the virtues of Jerusalem artichokes or sunchokes, and I'll link to that video below. Well, guess what? Now is the time to plant them, and I can't tell you how excited I am about that. And here are the tubers. Now these guys are super, super productive. They yield up to two pounds or a kilogram of tubers per plant and they're available just when you really crave them in the winter and they'll be yielding their creamy, smooth, earthy tubers throughout the winter. They're really magical. Now, if your ground is really frozen solid right down, then obviously wait till it is workable. There's been a bit of a frost here, but uh, I can still get into the soil so I'm going to crack on with them and the first job is just to space them out and I'm going to space them about uh, a foot or 30 centimeters apart in both directions. You could get away with spacing them more like um, one and a half foot or 45 centimeters apart if you have a bigger area to cover. I have to say it looks a bit like Rosie's been busy in here. To plant them I'm just going to dig a hole about 8 inches or as close to that as possible and that's 20 centimetres deep and pop it in. Now this has got quite a lot of uh, garden compost added already but if your soil's less rich you could go in with a handful of your own compost into the bottom of the hole just to help things along. Now Jerusalem artichokes, these are really really hardy hardy plants 
the Hardy down to about zone three, which is something like lows of minus 40. So you're not going to get any problems from them being in the cold soil. They're also remarkably pest free as well. And of course, they yield their tubers when they're needed most. What else can I say about them? Well, they've got really attractive flowers later on in the summer. And of course, they grow nice and tall, which makes them a great choice for a kind of natural shelter or windbreak. And they can cope with a little bit of shade as well. So this is such a hard working vegetable for your garden. They're also perennials. So some of the tubers that I harvest in the winter will be held back to replant and they'll go straight back in here to then give another crop and I can do that again uh, year after year after year. So with this all planted, I'll just give it a good water when it's really dry just to help it along. And other than that, it'll be left to its own devices till it's time to harvest from early winter. Come on, hurry up, get snap pea. Sorry, <laughs> oh dear. Uh, anyway, snap peas, also known as sugar snaps, are a real joy because there's no fiddly shelling involved. Boy, oh boy, do they taste amazing. Now I'm in a bit of a general health drive at the moment. I'm trying to eat more salads for lunch and adding some of these guys into your salad, well, it just brings a bit of a smile to your face. Snap peas and uh, snow peas are also known as mange too, which is the French for eat all because you eat the whole thing, peas and pods and all. And they pack down really well into containers for freezing and there's no sort of blanching needed. They just freeze them as they are. So this is a really good one to grow and you don't need to worry about gluts for that purpose. Now I'm gonna start these off in exactly the same way as I did for my regular peas back in the autumn and they're gonna be sewn into these toilet roll tubes. You can see them growing behind me, my autumn planted ones, but I've eased one out here because I wanted to show you the advantage of these nice long toilet roll tubes. It encourages the roots to grow down. And if I flip it over, you can see the roots are really kind of raring to go. So these will really take off when they're planted out. Now you can sow them directly outside but starting them off like this means you can get an earlier start and they're also protected from uh, things like slugs and pesky persistent pigeons too. Let's get on and sow our snap peas anyhow. So I am just gonna pop in two seeds per roll and then cover them over. And ideally we want them about an inch or uh, two centimeters deep once they're covered over. Now these will grow on in here until uh, they're maybe sort of six inches or 15 centimeters tall, by which time it'll be nice and warm outside and they can be planted out. Right, good girl. Here is some lemongrass that I started from a piece of stalk earlier last spring, last year, and it's really grown on and it's hiding indoors at the moment to keep it out from the chill. But I have to say it's making a really rather handsome house plant. This will come out back here once it's warmed up later on in the spring. But I'd like to start some more of it because I'm really getting into my Southeast Asian cuisine right now. And lemongrass is a real star in that department, as well as ginger, of course. And we've done a video on that too, which I'll link to below. Now this time I'm gonna start it off from seed. So I'm just using the usual all-purpose potting mix and I'm gonna sow over the top. Now sowing early like this is really advantageous. This will be grown on in the warm indoors and then we'll get a longer growing season so I'll have more chance of getting some stalks to harvest this year before overwintering the plants to grow on again for the following year. And then just cover them over very lightly. Now lemongrass does need light to germinate so you really don't want to cover them much, just the very slightest amount. Oh, hello Rosie and then to give them uh, a light water to get them started. I know, darling, I'll be with you in a minute. There we go. Now, like our lettuce seeds, we're gonna get some good results if we just cover it over with a bit of clear plastic like that. I need to find another band to secure it, but then this is gonna go indoors and I'll probably put it on my heat mat, but if you don't have one of those, don't worry, just a sunny, warm windowsill will do the trick. Once the seedlings are up, 
I'm going to carefully transfer them into their own pots in clusters of about three to six seedlings per pot. And then once they fill those smaller pots, I can pot them on into larger pots and they will be grown on in a sunny, warm position. Now it's important to keep them comfortably above freezing point, so I would say at least 43 Fahrenheit or six Celsius thereabouts. And once plants have nicely bulked out, I can just break off bits of grass to use in my cooking and then leave the rest to grow on. I'm especially looking forward to trying lemongrass tofu and perhaps a deliciously aromatic Thai tum yum soup. Mm -hmm, delicious. Now, if you've got ideas for using lemongrass, I'd love to know more, so drop me a comment below. There's lots more that can be sown now, including all of the veggies featured in last month's sowing video. That includes sweet and chili peppers, eggplant or aubergine, and carrots. So if you missed that one, I invite you to head on over there next. Happy gardening, and I will catch you next time.